All right, everyone, welcome to the module two. So, okay, as I mentioned in module one, I energy is equal to thermodynamics pretty much, okay? So you can imagine that this is a very important concept that I really need for you to grasp nicely uh, for you to be successful in my course, okay? Um, so the, what, is the, what is energy? I, I said there's thermodynamics and all, but we can define this as like a cap capability to produce an effect, okay? Um, so this effect is a pretty wide terminology, right? But that's okay, it, that's on purpose. So I can have some kind of an energy in my system, we talked about what a system is, and then I can use it for something useful for me, okay? For instance, I plug my uh, toaster oven into the uh, outlet, right? I convert that energy, the electrical energy that I have, to the heat, right? And I can heat my um, whatever that you're heating, all right? And we will talk about this towards the end of this uh, module two, but we will discuss the first uh, law of thermodynamics. And what it says is this energy that we're talking about cannot be created or destroyed, okay? But you may ask me, well, energy cannot be created, but then I'm sitting in my car, I, I push the gas pedal, then it just goes, I create energy. No, no, not really. It is important to note that energy can be stored within a system. In this particular case, it can be my car, but can also be transferred from one system to another. For instance, from my car to the surroundings, or in this particular case, from surroundings to the car, and I can convert it to propel my car, okay? Um, and this, this is a kind of important, so I want to uh, start using this terminology. Energy will be heat uh, plus uh, work, okay? Um, this energy transfer will be in the forms of heat transfer and work, okay? And I'll talk more about it, but just, I just want you to get the general view that this is what I uh, will have, okay? And I want to start with an easy example uh, to talk about the energy before I quantify what uh, energy am I talking about, okay? Uh, so right now, I'm in my home office, right? And uh, uh, I have my ceiling fan on, okay? I have a fan in the ceiling. So let's uh, draw my room. Okay, let me draw my room and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So you can see here, I have a like, fan. This is my room, okay? And I'll ask you a question. In general cases, um, and let's assume for this very question that my room is well sealed. What I mean by well sealed is, I have the window, I have the doors, but they're tightly closed, so there's no heat transfer from that uh, angle, okay? And I will also assume that my room is well insulated, okay, let me write it, well insulated. Um, you know what, the, you know, we have the insulation, right? So I'm, I'm thinking, or I'm assuming here that heat transfer through the walls is negligible, that's what I mean by well insulated, but well sealed as well, right? So then the question I'm going to ask you is, what will happen to the temperature in the room? I have the temperature in the room right now, Let's say probably it's in the low 70s, like 73 Fahrenheit right now, right? What will happen to the temperature of the room? Um, okay, will it go up or will it go down? Because, you know, clearly, um, you know, I do this so I feel chillier, right? But then in reality, it is impossible what you just said. The temperature of the room cannot go down, okay? That is not possible. Why am, I, uh, why am I saying this? Well, here's the deal. So, think about this. There's a, uh, you know, a motor over here, right? What it is, is turning. So, I, I'm getting actual electricity, right? So, I have electrical energy, right? Then I co convert it to the mechanical energy in the form of motion or this fan is rotating, right? And this, this is going to generate some heat. We'll talk about these things, okay? It's going to generate some heat into the room because it, as it is well insulated, right, and I'm sealed, right, there is no doors open, so then what will happen is I'm pumping energy into the system and the system is my room, so then the temperature will go up, okay. So then you may ask me, um, why do I have it on then, right, <laughs> you know, I said that the whole purpose is to feel cooler, right. Well, option A is this, Okay, I just realized that it's going to increase my temperature on. I did not know until now because I'm just teaching and I just figured it out. So wait a second, I'm going to go and turn it off immediately. That's option A. Or option B, B is this. We're still thinking about this confusion of heat transfer versus temperature. Okay, when there is a moving air around me, what happens is 
my convection coefficient. You can uh, learn these things in heat transfer course, but the convection coefficient goes up. So I will lose, my body will lose more heat as when there's a motion in the air, okay? So I feel like it is cooler, I feel like it's chillier because I'm, you know, um, and also, you know, one thing to note, also I, I didn't mention this, but uh, well, I'm here, right? I'm actually also generating heat, right? Each person in a room is gonna generate heat. I have the computer on, I'm looking at the screen right now because I'm looking at some of my draft notes, right? To move into here. I have the, this is the iPad, iPad is on, right? Everything is generating heat, energy. So this is bound to happen, okay? The temperature of the room will go up. Okay, so I think that's enough of uh, that conversation, but let's talk about this. I'll write something and you may not really appreciate it for the minute, but I really don't have an absolute value of the total energy, okay? The, 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 the total energy in the system that I have over here, right? Right over here. And I'm thinking of what is the total energy of it? I do not use the absolute value, okay? Value of energy. So I really don't use that. What I am actually more interested is I'm interested in the change in energy, okay? If capital is the total energy, I'm interested in the change of it, okay? I'm not quite interested in this, or I cannot really obtain it. And I'm not talking about the physics or quantum mechanics point of view, right? What I'm talking about is this. As we will find out in a couple of minutes, uh, it's coming up very soon, that, you know, we're going to divide this into two. We will call it microscopic and microscopic, and two of the forms of microscopic is kinetic energy and potential energy. Let's pick up the potential energy just to give you an example, right? Let's say that I have a, 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 I don't know, object, okay? And my question to you will be, what is the energy of this? Okay? And you're used to working in delta E, actually. I'm just trying to convey that message to you, okay? And, you know, um, this is the answer to this, uh, what is the potential? So I'm asking you, what is the potential energy here? Okay, and as you know, potential energy is mgz, right? Well, here's the thing. Um, I am, my mass is something like, let's say 10 kilogram or 10 pound mass, right? So this is given to you. The g itself is, as long as I'm not doing the fluid mechanics course, well, g may be variable, but in thermodynamics, we don't really deal with these things. So this is constant. So these two are constant, fine. I know these two. I multiply two constants, I get another constant. But what about this guy, right? That's the question. Well, that, 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 that Z that I'm talking about is the answer is, uh, it depends. And for my students who take my courses, know this very well, whenever I don't know the answer to something, I say it depends, okay? Because that is such an easy way out. And I appear kind of cool, right? I, I kind of know a lot, the big picture, and I say it depends. But in reality, I don't really know what the student's asking. Okay, that was a joke. But the point is this, this Z is really seriously it depends, okay? It seriously depends. Depends on, let's say that this, this, this is my datum or reference, right? It really de determines on this. But let's say another student can take this as the datum, right? Obviously two energy values will be different and that's quite all right, okay? But here's what we will be dealing with in this particular course or, you know, when you go to real life, uh, you know, job front as well. Let's say that this, has gone down, this energy was here. Now it's gone down to here, right? And I'm trying to convert that energy. I had a high energy over here. Now I have a lower energy, right? Because it's a function of Z. So Z is lower over here as compared to there. So then I, will, I can convert this to some type of useful energy and create myself a machine that, you know, I can use, right? That particular energy. But here's the thing. When you have the datum student A versus student B, that student will get exactly the same as delta E because if you think about it, it is independent of the Z, okay? So I'll give you some numbers so that we can get going. So let's say that this is one foot, okay? Let's say that this is two foot, right? In student A, you know, energy one, let's call this is A, this is B. Student A version, uh, the energy of one will be mg2, right? The second energy will be mg minus one, right? This is for student A. Student B, that selects datum over there. Energy one will be mg3. For two, it will be mg0, right? It's exactly aligned with the datum. And most of the time, the student takes this as the datum. And they, you know, the student should. I do too, right? I don't want to deal with I like number zero. Because when I multiply something by zero, I got myself the best number ever, zero. So I don't have to deal with it. But you can see when I do one minus two, right? This minus two is an example, right? So you can see here, this will be, you know, mg is a constant. So two minus minus one becomes three, right? Number three mathematically. 
this is 3 2 so you see it's the same thing so just want to highlight that this is not that uh, off okay and okay so I'm, why am I making a big deal out of this uh, kind of uh, you know simple concept well here's the problem let's say that we we'll talk about this very soon I tend to talk a lot I say um, we're gonna talk about soon but maybe it will be in 10 minutes um, internal energy I'm interested in internal energy we talked about this briefly but let's say this is you you is the internal energy or let's more specifically no pun intended let's say this is specific internal energy right it's a function of the state state postulate and let's say that T and P is given so I know my internal energy now here's the deal this question I'm sure students who are looking at different sources will tell me this U that you obtain for this state between two different sources can be different okay so this u1 and u1 may be different this is state one okay if you look at two different sources you may get different u1s and you may be which one is right i don't really care about which one is right to be honest with you i only care about i'm looking at the let's say that this i go from state one to state two then if i have let's say that u2 minus u1 that will be the same for these two different uh, sources the pure absolute value of energies will be different that's quite all right do not freak out that's what i want to do in this module all right let me give a break over here so i can come up with the total energy specific energy and etc terms okay i'll be right back thank you for watching this